Welcome to the Village Chapel on this eve of Thanksgiving. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you've done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. I can always tell when the time of year that we in this country call the holiday season is fast approaching. No, it's not that people in my neighborhood have already garnished their houses and yards with electric lights, inflatable characters, metallic reindeer, and whatever else Walmart is selling this year and telling them to buy. No, it's not the TV commercials that began before Halloween, selling toys and other gifts, luring customers to the malls and stores like shopaholics seeking their seasonal fix. No, it's not the sad reality that hardly anyone anymore in the body of Christ pays any attention to Advent, which begins in four days as a season to prepare ourselves spiritually for the coming of the Christ child. No, it's not so much these things or even a glance at the calendar that alerts me to the so-called holiday season. Rather, it's the anticipation of relatives coming together. And if your family is like mine, as much as we look forward to being together, we're having to be very diplomatic and circumspect about what subjects we can discuss in a civil manner. And to add to that anxiety, we're Christians, commanded by our Lord to love one another. So in this holiday season, what's a child of God to do? Quite simply, the answer is be thankful. Always find a way to be thankful. That's one of the lessons we get from the book of Job. And in the words of the musical Godspell, when your spouse is crying, sighing, and your olive tree is dying, or maybe your relatives are just coming over to dinner, be thankful by remembering all the blessings we've received when we deserved something much less merciful from a just God. If we are to set an example of faith, hope, and love in this fallen world, we must find a way to be thankful, especially in the midst of life's tragedies, or when it's simply trying to survive our severest critics, otherwise known as our family. This gets me to the question I'd ask you to ponder today and in the days to follow, because I think it's a real issue. Can you be grateful to someone that you don't 
at least at the present time, want to be around? I'm talking about a situation when you don't particularly want to spend time with someone, and maybe for a good reason, and yet you feel indebted to that person for the blessings you've received. Many grown children feel this way about their parents or other adults in their lives who were there for them in times of need, and yet the relationship has suffered because of other circumstances. How can you be grateful without being hypocritical, ignoring genuine feelings of unresolved hurt? I believe this is where we are called, perhaps more than at any other time, to gird up our loins and set aside past grievances, asking our Lord, who forgave his executioners on the cross, for the fortitude we need to be grateful. Not when it's easy or obvious, but when we may think it's practically impossible. And let's remember, Jesus only commanded us to love one another. He never said anything about having to like other people all the time. We are all, in our own ways, capable of being distinctly unlikable on occasion. But so often true love is remembering those blessings we've received from people we may not especially want to be around at this time. Is it long-lasting love about that kind of remembering? This holiday season, when we find ourselves and others getting on each other's nerves, let's try to remember how, in any way, we've been blessed. I really believe that when we are truly grateful people, we are as close as possible to reflecting the vulnerable and costly love of Christ. And when we do that, we're not far from being able to pray for our enemies at home and abroad, praying that our Lord will transfigure them and us. And you know what? He might just do it. Wouldn't you like to be around when he does? Happy Thanksgiving.